Hey, good morning, everybody. We got a kind of a garage slab slash mini house we're doing this morning. We didn't do the setup on this. We were just hired to do the pouring and the finishing. So the people we're working for got it all set up. But it's got a, it's basically a four inch thick slab. The edges are really deep. They're about 20 inches deep by almost two feet wide. You can see. It's got the styrofoam, the radiant heat. Trick is trick is with these is keeping the form straight where the edges are so thick but looks like they got them set up pretty good so how many of y'all have seen a concrete slab like this set up using these wall panels I mean we we don't do it because we don't do walls so we don't even have the panels We'd have to borrow them or buy them. But like, how many of you guys have these panels and set your slabs up with these? I mean, we would normally set up something like this. The edges are about 18 inches thick. So normally we would use a 2x12 and then screw a 2x6 on top to get our 18 inches. That way, you know, we don't have to use any as near as many pieces as this. As you can see, most of these are four footers. So there's a lot of pieces to this. And then... Not only is there a lot of pieces to it, but then you got double 2x4s on the bottom. You got a 2x4. You're staking in on the, I mean, double 2x4s on the top there. Then you got a 2x4 on the bottom you're staking in to hold the bottom from kicking out. And then you got, you know, the braces and the stuff like that are going to be about the same no matter what kind of slab you're doing that has edges this thick. But, I mean, all in all, these clip together so they hold together really tight. So you're not going to really get any movement, you know, left or right from them. The only movement you might get is that probably the top might bow out a little bit. So what we did when we showed up this morning, um, like I said, we didn't set this up. The company we're working for set it up. The guys had the, the forms like perfect right on the string. So what we did is we went around and you can turn those turnbuckles. You can see you can turn them a little bit. We actually kicked the panels in a little bit, like an eighth of an inch. So when we did get all the pressure in there from the concrete, if it did want to move it out a little bit, you know, at least at least it's already in and it's going to move hopefully just out a little bit to the line and not beyond the line. So and it ended up working pretty good. We didn't have to adjust. We didn't have to adjust any of those turnbuckles outwards. So the panels actually did moved out a little bit as we put all that pressure on them. This is a You'd be surprised how much pressure 18 inch thick concrete by about two feet wide puts on those panels like that. But I mean, it worked out pretty good. A lot of times when we'll do slabs like this with thickened edges, it takes one guy just to keep the form straight, you know, to go around, keep checking the line. If you need to put in an extra kicker or something, you throw the extra kicker in. Um, but on this one today you know we just kept an eye on the string and everything looked out worked out good so we're getting the concrete poured in here it's it's cold this morning it's you know it's below freezing and they just it's December here in Maine so it's typically it's you know high temperatures are in the 30s for a normal high and then in the 20s at night so for us to be able to pour concrete in December outside like this, it's it's pretty good. It wasn't going to get up much higher than like 35, 36 today. The way the way the concrete sets up on days like this is we'll put it's got hot water in it, so the hot water temperature around 130 degree water, and then when when the you know the water goes into the mix and it gets all mixed up with everything, the aggregate, the sand, the concrete comes out at about probably 70 degrees is what they're shooting for 68 to 70 degrees we didn't have I didn't have my temper thermometer on me so I didn't get to test this but it felt pretty warm on your boots and on your hands you could feel it it was warm so it was actually setting up really good on us and then we always dump a little accelerator in on top of that but what you might not know is pouring on the styrofoam is a big big plus a big bonus pouring uh, concrete on styrofoam that's warm in these cold temperatures the styrofoam really helps hold the heat in the concrete a lot longer than if you just pour on the ground or on plastic so it's a big big bonus it probably cuts a couple hours out of the finishing time anyway when the styrofoam's down 
right now what Luke's doing is they had they had a little bond out in there made out of styrofoam for the shower and they didn't get it high enough and they put the wire mesh right over it so that didn't make much sense so I called the guy and I was like hey doesn't that want to be up at least flush with the concrete or higher it doesn't really want to be lower then you'll be chipping it out and the guy's like yeah you know just do what you got to do so we know we know right where that is when you guys get done uh, what I ended up doing was they had a little bit of extra styrofoam laying on the ground so I cut out a little piece you're gonna see here in a minute and I'll be able to lay that piece right on top of what Luke just cleaned off and then we can we can mag float around that now there's also a water line right there with the electrical line and I mean most of the time that's wrapped with something so Luke's just wrapping that with a pipe then they can pull that out they'll pull that out as they finish so it'll it'll just give them a little bit of movement in that water line if they need to yeah, you can see how I resolve that little issue right there. Now that gets us up. That's almost going to be flush with the surface. So when they come time to, to do the building and the plumber shows up, he can just dig that styrofoam out and he'll have access to put his shower unit in there. Or at least the drain for it, I guess. I got my grade stick now. I, you know, there's a laser set up. You can't see it right here on the video, but... I got a, a self-leveling laser, a, ro a rotary laser, and I'm just shooting the grades with the receiver there on my stick to, f to get my grades in the middle. They tied, you know, they tied the double roll rebar, this number four rebar going around this right to the wire mesh, and they didn't, you know, they didn't really leave us any slab bolsters or bricks or anything to put under it, so we're trying to yank it up the best we can. It stays up pretty good for the most part. Once we get all that concrete under it, we're probably pouring, I don't know, probably a six slump, I guess, today, right around a six. So once you get that, the wire and the rebar yanked up into that slump, you know, you get all that aggregate under it. It doesn't want to really fall back down to the bottom, even though we're walking on the wire in there. Once you get the aggregate and the stone under it, it doesn't go back down to the bottom. It stays up in the concrete pretty good. So Darren's grabbed the seven foot screed and he's just going to screed into that little area, get around that pipe. Luke and I are going to grab onto the 14 and just get him down, get him a little bit closer so he can use a 7. Darren can use a 7 to get around that pipe. We'll go up the other end, start screeding down the other way just a little bit. Usually when you screed around a piece of plumbing like that, you got to dig out just a little concrete usually leave it just a little bit higher around there as you screed around it so you want to dig dig a little bit out flatten it out get it mag and then just keep moving we didn't bother this thing was so small i don't know it was 30 by 24 to, to us that's pretty small but we didn't bother digging out the vibrating screed if you've seen us use that in some other videos even though this was flat, sometimes it's just a slower to go around a bunch of plumbing like that with a with a power screed versus just doing it by hand. Like I said, at least for us it is. We're so used to screeding stuff by hand because that's the way we've done it for years and years that sometimes on these small ones we'll just grab the hand screed rather than get the, the vibrating screed out. I think it took us... All in all, from start to finish, probably took us about 30 minutes or so to get this poured and bow floated. And then Darren and Luke will stay, and they'll power trial it. So they'll power trial it nice and smooth, get the saw cuts in today, and then the foundation contractors can send a couple guys back, and they'll strip the forms probably, I don't know, the next day or a couple days. Try not to get too much concrete in there and have to shovel it out. This one, this one we got just about perfect when we told the guy to actually we, we got it a little bit low so they're scraping a little bit down the chute now to, to fill that little low spot and then we can get the truck chute out of there and won't have to make a mess shoveling anything out. When I was bull floating right here I could tell it was setting up pretty good. I had to go over Usually I can go down and back with a bow float and then done, I can move on, move it over. But in a lot of spots here, I had to go back and forth two or three times just to get it smooth. That tells you the stuff's starting to set up pretty good. 
So how do, what do you think? How'd we do on this? Would you would you set something up like this or would you just use two by twelves? Oh well, there we got that in. Twenty two yards in that little thing. There was eleven yards just in the the grade beam or the haunch or the thickened edge, you know, whatever you want to call it. We usually call it a haunch, but eleven yards right in that haunch. And then this thing here, this is for a shower, so they had that way too low. We didn't want to bury it, so we had to add to the top of that. Got some plumbing going in, so. Pretty small house, 30 by 24. The forms held pretty good, at least the tops did for the most part. Got it right on that string line. Nothing really moved, we didn't have to, we didn't have to adjust anything. These guys use their wall panels, the two foot wall panels. Like those are four footers, four, four, four. I think they have a six footer in on some of them. And then they use these turnbuckles to stake them and keep them straight. So a little bit different than how we do it, but it works. They held up good, so that's all we care about. All right, guys, another cold one. It's in December now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.